and for Donald Trump's very, very large a brain. Today we're tackling a topic that many of us have faced, surviving Valentine's Day with a narcissistic partner. Stick around till the end and I'll give you my top tip for keeping your narcissist happy on Valentine's Day. Picture this, it's Valentine's Day and after weeks of careful planning and considerable expense, you're eagerly anticipating exchanging heartfelt tokens and experiences with your loving partner. Instead, you're met with a box of, well, let's just say less than romantic gifts. What is this? But what's the rationale behind these choices? Let's break it down, shall we? First up, we have appearance gifts. These are often gifts that you'd like. Some jewelry, some designer shoes. In my case, it was Lacoste polo shirts. Now, at first glance, these might seem like normal gifts meant to please you. But don't forget, for a narcissist, it's not about you. If they buy you something to wear, it's about making you look good next to them. Share your thoughts on that in the comments below. Next, we have token romantic gifts. Narcissistic partners have heard of love, they've seen it on TV, read about it, even watched friends go through it with a jealous glint in their eye. They just haven't found the right person. So brace yourselves for the little nod to the concept of romantic love. A trinket with a heartfelt message. For me, it was a small knockoff Swarovski crystal bear, complete with charity shop price stickers still attached. Do you think their token love gifts are a genuine attempt at romance or a subtle reminder of how little you mean to them? And last but not least, the piece de resistance, the upgrade gift. These are gifts that elevate you on a deeper level so that the narcissist can feel better not just in front of other people, but when you're at home alone with them. It could be something superficial like a cosmetic procedure, or it could also be something to raise your status like paying for a professional qualification but it's always a way to repair something they think is wrong with you and is bugging them. For me, it was, get this, a Bible. Yes, you heard that right. She gave me, an atheist, for Valentine's Day at the zenith of our relationship, a Bible. Let me know in the comments what you've been given by your dysfunctional partners. I'm sure there are lots of unbelievable stories out there. Am I crazy in reading too much into this? Well, if you're not convinced, let's delve a little deeper into their behaviors and motivations and link it back to the DSM criteria for narcissistic personality disorder. Stay tuned because this kind of grounded understanding is missing from a lot of content on social media and it is gold for validating your experiences. Here are five key insights to keep in mind. Number one, they're bad at gifts. There's a theory that narcissistic individuals who lack emotional empathy have a kind of compensatory cognitive empathy, which gives them a preternatural ability to peer into your emotions and expertly push your buttons. I think there's some truth to that, but let me tell you what they're terrible at. Gift giving. Despite any cognitive empathy they may possess, narcissists struggle to grasp the emotional nuances of gift giving. This aligns with the DSM criteria's emphasis on a lack of empathy, as individuals with MPD often have difficulty understanding or relating to the emotions of others, including in the context of gift giving. Number two, they think they did great. During my relapse, when I met up with my narcissistic ex, we were having a rare, open, honest conversation, laughing like old friends, and I said something about her being a bad gift giver and brought up the Bible she'd given me. Now. She didn't fly into a narcissistic rage on the spot, but she didn't have any idea what I was talking about. In their world, their gift choices are flawless, even if they miss the mark completely. This reflects the grandiose sense of self-importance described in the DSM criteria, where individuals with MPD may have an exaggerated sense of their own abilities and accomplishments, leading them to believe that their actions, including gift choices, are always superior. For Donald Trump and for Donald Trump's very, very large a brain. Number three, they value superficiality. Materialistic gestures and appearances reign supreme in the narcissist's world. The happiest I ever saw my ex was when I gave her a Tiffany necklace. Need I say more? This corresponds to the DSM criteria's emphasis on a preoccupation with fantasies of success, power, beauty, or ideal love. Individuals with MPD may prioritize materialistic or superficial displays of affection as these align with their inflated self-image and desire for admiration. Number four, they expect the extraordinary. 
From extravagant activities to grand displays of affection, nothing short of extraordinary will suffice. I'm sure I'll go into my ex's profession and how it was all geared toward providing narcissistic supply in another video. But suffice it to say that even though she wasn't well educated or a high earner, she went to incredible lengths to display the ostentatious wealth, beauty and success on social media that you might expect from a billionaire's girlfriend. This relates to the DSM criteria's description of individuals with MPD requiring excessive admiration. They may expect lavish displays of attention and affection from others as these reinforce their belief in their own superiority and specialness. Number five. They keep score. Every gift, every gesture is meticulously tallied in the narcissist's mental scoreboard. As I said, when I brought up the Bible gift, she didn't lose her cool. We were in a bar. I know a lot of you understand what I mean when I say I definitely paid for it later. This ties into the DSM criteria's portrayal of individuals with MPD as being interpersonally exploitative, where they may manipulate others to meet their own needs and desires, keeping track of what they perceive as owed to them in return for their perceived greatness. But fear not, my friends, for there is a light at the end of the tunnel. While navigating Valentine's Day with a narcissist may seem daunting, it's not impossible. By setting boundaries, practicing self-care and managing expectations, you can survive the holiday with your sanity intact. You can find out more about those in my other videos. Remember, you deserve love and appreciation, whether it's Valentine's Day or any other day of the year. So take care of yourself and cherish the relationships that uplift and support you. You'll need them when your relationship finally goes off a cliff. I've been through it and I'm here for you too. Oh, and finally, my tip for making your narcissist happy on Valentine's Day. You can't. I hope most of you are not surprised by that. Listen, the narcissistic relationship cycle is immutable. Whether you're in the idealization phase and here because something feels off, or you're struggling through the devaluation phase and desperate for answers to ease the pain, the discard phase is coming. But by educating yourself like you have today, you can shield yourself to blunt the pain and speed up your recovery afterward. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more insightful content. If you'd like my help in your recovery, check out my website at chrisjonescoaching.com. The link is in the description. Until next time, take care of yourself and stay strong. You've got this.